And now, Journey to Success with Pete Asmus. Tonight, mindset to action steps and everything in between. We are about you, focusing on what you need to get to that next level. So get ready, get, ready, get excited, get excited because, because we, we are about to get started. started. From, coast, From to coast, coast to coast, your host, Pete, Pete the Visionary, visionary Pitbull. Pit Welcome, everybody. Today Asmus. is Set It Off Sunday. There we go. Now it's not freaking out. Um, today is Set It Off Sunday, though, and this is Journey to Success. It is June 7th, 2015. And this is the 95th episode, five more episodes, and we're at 100. I can't, even, I can't even tell you. Once a week, and then every, every once in a while, I have it off. But for the most part, I'm always doing these, these, uh, these webinars because this is, this is kind of like my, my time to really kind of tell you guys what's going on and, and kind of share what my experience is, right? And also kind of give you guys tips and, and tricks that you can do to kind of set your life up for the way you want it to be. And, and here's the bottom line, though. And, and a lot of times I get asked, well, you know, once you set up your life, once you create your life, once you do it, is, is, is it like, how awesome is it then? And, and the reality is, is it's as awesome as you want it to be throughout the entire process. Your life right now, it can be incredible or it can be driven or it can be a nightmare or it can be horrible. It can be any of those things because you get to choose how you want to live your life. Now, a lot of you are going, well, that's not true, Pete. I, we've got, what, 56, wow, 56 people on here now, 57 people on here now. Um, and and you, a lot of you might be thinking, well, no, it's, it's not that simple. Like, I don't, I don't just create the life. I don't just enjoy my life. It's not just how I want it to be. But the reality is, as you gain success, as you get more successful, as you become, as you get more money, as you get more power, as you get more influence, as you get more all of those things, right? It doesn't mean that you just get those things and there aren't consequences. It, it, just like Newton, right? Equal and opposite reaction, right? For every action, there's an opposite reaction. Well, there, the, the reality is, is the bigger that you get, the more successful that you get, the more people want things for you from you, the more things you're responsible for, the more things can go wrong. So even though you may have more money at one point, it doesn't mean that everything just goes smoothly. And the better you can understand that now, prior to getting where you want to go, the more effective and the better you're going to be once you get there. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I heard, you know, I love those little things like live the balanced life and do this and do that, right? And I'm going to live a four hour work week. And I'm, man, all of that is crap. It just doesn't work. The, the, the reality is nothing is balanced. Nothing. Even your car can't be perfectly balanced, right? Even a Corvette, I think it's 4951. Nothing is perfectly balanced. And, and the reason is, is because if something needs attention, you've got to give it attention. Well, when you're giving that attention, you're obviously neglecting other things. And so you're constantly running around and you're spinning plates. I mean, that's kind of what we do. We run around and we spin plates. We run around and we create the, the environments, we create the opportunities, we create, but we're, we're not really creating all of them. We're setting up the possibility, right? That's what we're doing. So when we're spinning that plate really fast, the reality is we're just spinning the opportunity going, man, come on, come on, come on, no whammy, right? It's like pulling down on a, on a, <laughs> on a uh, what is that, gambling slot machine, right? You're, you're just, man, no whammy, no whammy. And the more plates that you can get spinning, the more opportunities that you're going to get. Look, we have, we do turnkey flips in, in um, Arizona, right? And sometimes we have deals that have 60% in, in profit in them. Sometimes we have deals that have 30% in profit in them. The 60% profit deals aren't all the time. There may be one out of every hundred, right? So if you want to get more of those deals, that just means you have to do more deals. Because one out of every hundred you're going to get is going to be this complete grand slam deal, right? But we always are looking for how can we make that happen? How can we create that opportunity? But at the same time, I don't want to do too much work. I don't want to be too much involved. So tonight we're going to talk about how to... Um, come on. Tonight we're going to talk about the three things that you can do right now to change the results you get instantly. So what three things can you do in your life right now, like today, right now, that will completely change the results that you get. The crazy part is they're small things. 
They're not big things like you would think. It's not, nobody, I'm not going to tell you, hey, so one of these things that you need to do is go out and buy a brand new $80,000 car because that's going to make all the difference. The one other thing that you're going to need to do is go buy a $14,000 watch because that's going to make all the difference. It won't. It will. I mean, honestly, if you have a nice watch, if you have a nice car, yes, those things do make an impact when you are around people that notice what those things are, right? Obviously, everybody notices a a nice car, but I'm talking about watches and, and shoes and things like that. So what do you do? What can you do right now that can really leverage you and and just catapult you to where you want to be? We're going to talk about that tonight. But before we get into that, I want to talk about where this is all coming from. This is the last chapter in in my book, The Question Factor. And I'm I've I've basically got everything done. The the cover is now done. Um, and now I'm just formatting the inside to match an eight and a half by five and a half book so that um, I can actually have it printed. I want to have this one printed. Um, I'm, I'm just extremely excited about it. And at eight and a half by five and a half, like, you know, one of, um, a little bit bigger than this kind of book, right? Like this type of book. Okay. Who moved my cheese? That's a good book. So, so it's basically this size, and where this book is 81 pages, right? Mine is about three times the size of this one. So it's it's a pretty awesome book, um, and I'm I'm extremely excited about it. To me, it's kind of like merging, basically like the hero, merging Who Moved My Cheese, merging a lot of the different books that I had seen and wanted to put in the how. How do you do all these things, right? How do you really get what you want, okay? When you, if, if you, any of you guys have read, and I hope you have, have read my first book, Force Your Dreams Into Reality, and you can go to forceyourdreams.com and you can download that absolutely free. If you've read that, it was really the what you need to do. What do you need to do to create what you want, right? You're going to have to have passion. You're going to have to have drive. You're going to have to have focus, da, 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 da. But I didn't talk about how to get those things. Well, how do you do it? And so this, this series that we've been going through, the Get the Winning Edge series, this has all been about how to do that. And, and honestly, when you break it down, the how to do it has everything to do with the questions that we ask ourselves, has everything to do with the way that we talk. I, I promise you this. What, and, and I know this sounds stupid because I hate even saying this because I think this is such a powerful statement and you're going to go, oh, yeah, I already knew that. What the mind believes it can do, it can do, right? What the mind believes it can achieve or what the mind can conceive, it can achieve, right? All these great ways that we've worded these things and it's like, oh yeah, that's great. And we know them, but it's, it's almost like when you drive to work every day, right? And, and you get to where you just see it and it's like, nah, whatever. And I say, hey man, whatever you think you can do, you can do. Look, look, if you think you can do it, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. You're like, yeah, I know, I get that. I've heard that, I've heard that ever since I was six, right? I've heard that ever since I was a kid. And I get that. I have to. It isn't until you truly understand what I'm saying that it becomes a pivotal point for you. When you really understand, see, everything that we do, I tell you it's going to be difficult. You say, I get that. And then when something difficult happens, you give up and you're like, well, yeah, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same, Pete. It wasn't the same. Like my difficulty is different than yours. Absolutely. Absolutely. None of you guys had a a child with brain cancer and a child with alopecia and were homeless when you were 16 and living on top of Alpha Beta. I mean, none of you have had the same experiences that I have. If we want to get into a how bad is our life contest, I can can get up and, and bat with you guys. But why? Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to throw my hat into that ring and go, well, look, all the all the ways my life sucked. One of the things that I had to do when I was talking to a friend of mine was, okay, so some of the things that I share with you, some of my challenges, I share with you so that you realize that I'm just like you, all right? Meaning that just because I'm always positive, just because I always think that anything's possible, just because I'm always positive and driving forward does not mean that my life has been handed to me. It hasn't. I've gone through more challenges and difficult things than I can even, than I even think is fair. I really, honestly, I just don't think it's fair. But guess what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares if I think my life is fair or not. Nobody cares about that. What do they care about? They care about being around successful people. 
You know what? You having a pity party and sharing with everybody how much your life sucks does not get anybody to want to come and do business with you. It doesn't. They may want to give you something to eat on, on, the, on the weekend because they think you don't have any money, but it doesn't get anybody to believe in you. It doesn't get anybody to invest in you because you're not even investing in yourself. Because a positive investment, a good investment, is something that we're excited about. It's something that we're happy about. If you're a great investment, show everybody. Show them. Show them how amazing you are. And I say that, and I know some of you guys are going, look, man, I'm not like you. I'm not going to go up on Facebook and talk about how great my life is or, or whatever, right? And I don't get on life and say, hey, my life is so great and everybody should have my life. That's not what I do. But I do share where I'm going. I share my family. I put my family out there, man. I love my family. I love my girls, right? And I'm going to show you guys something in a second that it still blows me away that I, I, I keep staring at this picture that I created the other day because I just can't believe it. And it's really kind of what I'm talking about when I say focus on your outcome. What do you want your life to be like? A, if you don't know what you want it to look like, it's never, ever going to be there. B, if you don't start focusing on what you want and stop focusing on all the reasons that are preventing you from getting there, you're never going to get there. Because all you're ever going to see is roadblock after roadblock. And every time you see that roadblock, you're going to go, well, this isn't going to work. And you're going to go the other direction. You're going to go, man, how come everybody else gets to make it? And everybody else doesn't. We don't. Everybody else's life sucks just as bad. The, the thing about it is, as you keep growing, it's so weird because I, I swear I keep having this realization. And it's like I keep hitting myself in the head with a two by four, right? Because I keep thinking that eventually I'm going to make enough and everything that I want to have happen is just going to happen. And, and, and the reality is it isn't right? My computers are never always going to work right. They just aren't. Like, nobody's computers work right. I don't know why I keep thinking that I'm the only one that has challenges with computers when they have viruses or when they're going down or when they're acting slower, when the internet, maybe it's not even a computer, it's the internet, right? We all have internet. So it isn't just me that has these challenges. I'm sure all of you have been sitting at your computer going, man, come on. Why is this thing taking so long? It shouldn't take this long. But whether it should or shouldn't, what is it doing, right? And so um, I'm talking about, well, that wasn't the slide I thought was coming up next. So what we've got going on um, coming up is going to be our off-market property. We're going to be doing that one again on Thursday. Um, I'm excited about this because this is really, when, when we're talking about one of the things that I've wanted to create for a long, long time has been this turnkey system that really is all about getting investors together and creating a, a sustainable solution. And so that's a lot about what, or that's what we're going to be going over on Thursday. I'm going to get off that though. Investor quarterly. This is another one of those things that I put together that I wanted, that I was going after that dream, right? I was going after something that I wanted and, and then a magazine. I mean, man, I've got this magazine. This is the second issue now that is coming out for investor quarterly. And this issue is even better than the first. And I'm excited for the next one. But four weeks ago, five weeks ago, I had no idea how to put together a magazine at all. I just did it. See, the difference between somebody that's going to be successful and somebody that isn't is the fact that they'll take action. It always comes down to taking action. I believe in myself even when I don't believe in myself. I believe I can do anything. Now, I, I understand that sometimes I'm going to fail at first, but I know that I'm smart enough to figure it out. I know that I have enough drive and enough and enough. I just won't give up. I just won't give up. I won't I won't throw in a towel. And even when it seems impossible, I will give everything I have. And I will make it. I, I, I will make it. I mean, I don't care if it's impossible. I will create that to happen. I got on Bloomberg Radio without knowing anybody. I made it happen. I created the opportunity. I've now got a magazine. I'm going back onto radio again next week. I'm starting up the, the radio show again. Um, I'm not going to go on Bloomberg this time. I'm, I'm starting off on Blog Talk because I'm going to start putting this on the radio too. Because there's a lot of you guys that would love to just tune in. And so if I have it available where you can just literally tune in on the radio, or not on the radio, but maybe on, um, on the internet, right? You can go to that link on your phone and you can listen in live. 
then I can create another uh, another platform, right? And I want to go back into it because I, I love doing radio and I love doing the magazine and I love doing the, the bus tours and, and all of that. But I created that reality, right? And this is the, sh- the, the picture I was talking about. So two years ago, I think we, or a year ago, we wrote Marie the Monkey and we created the, the, the different characters in it, right? And now we've got a book. I've got four of the, four of the 40 pages. So I've got 10% of the book done for the coloring book aspect of it. And it's coming to fruition. It's becoming a reality, right? And the only reason that it's becoming a reality is because I started taking action. I just started doing things. And you never know how all of the pieces are going to fit together. They just end up fitting together, right? So this book that we're talking about today is The Question Factor, which is right there. Here's another logo that I came up with uh, that I created now for um, Asmus Media Group. And you're going to see that logo at the end that I've just been doing creative stuff, man. I've just been going crazy. So here's number one, right? Three things that you can do right now to change your results instantly. Number one, stop wishing life was easier. What if instead you were better? Start upping your game. Stop wishing that everything around you was easier to do. I wish my life was easier. I wish everything was easier. I wish this was easier. This was easier. This was easier. Stop. Because the reality is, it it isn't. It isn't. It's not going to get easier. What's going to happen is you're going to get better. So stop wishing it was easier and start wishing that you were better. And then stop wishing you were better and start making yourself better. And how do you do that? Well, it's the same way. I keep talking about this. It's the decisions that we make. You want to become a better person? Then start making better decisions. How do you make better decisions? Well, the way that you can do anything like an expert is from experience, which means you have to start making a ton of decisions and you're going to make wrong ones. That's okay. You're going to make bad decisions. Wonderful. Because only with those bad decisions can you start to create and make the right ones. If you have zero experience, you have no idea what to do, what kind of decision to make. You don't know if you should, well, if you don't know what a capacitor is or what a resistor is, if you know nothing about electronics, then if I say to you, well, hey, should I use a capacitor here or a resistor here? You won't know what kind of advice to give me because you have no clue, right? We've got to make our, I don't have any clue how I just got there, but we've got to make ourselves better, all right? I really don't know how I got there. That was weird. All right. Secondly, stop giving up your happiness for feeling good, right? And here's what I mean by that. A lot of times we think about this. Think about this. What would make you, if if any of you guys right now have any habits you'd love to quit, all right? Let's say that you want to lose weight. Let's say that you're smoking or you chew tobacco or whatever, whatever it is, all right? But I know those ones are pretty obvious, right? Smoking, being overweight, not being healthy, right? Those are things. Now, would we be happier if we were thinner, if we were in shape, whatever that 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 version of you is, right? Would you be happier with that version of you? Would you be happier with the version that didn't smoke? Would you be happier with the version that ran all the time? Would you be happier whatever it is that you wish about yourself? Would you be happier if that was the case? And all of us say yes, absolutely, totally. Are you kidding me? I would, I would, I would absolutely be happier if I had quit smoking, if I wasn't a smoker anymore. And one of the things that I had to do two and a half years ago was realize that point. I had to realize what I'm saying right here, okay? That I had to stop, I had to stop giving up wanting to be happy for feeling good. Because Every time I took a a hit of the cigarette, right? Every time I smoked a cigarette, or or I didn't smoke anymore, I was chewing tobacco, which is just as disgusting. But every time I put that chew in my mouth, right? And I, oh man, woo, man, this feels so good, right? And I would trick myself. I'd be like, oh no, people can't even really tell that I have a chew in, right? No, nobody can really tell. Although I've got this huge thing in the bottom of my lip, I'm spitting, right? It's not attractive, but we start, to, we start to make things logical in our head and go, oh, well, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, right? And then what we're doing is we're doing those little moments to make ourselves feel better instead of being happier, right? We're giving up having a great life for having an okay time right now because it's not worth us giving up something now for what we want later. At the end of the day, that's what it's really about. We're not willing to create a better future for ourselves 
because the future that we have right now requires nothing of us. I love that line out of uh, out of Tomorrowland. It's so great. It's so great. Because the, the, the future that we have, this horrible future that we have, right? Because look, the reality is if I'm smoking right now and I'm overweight, do you really think I'm going to be 100 years old? Do you really think? I mean, no. We know that something bad is going to happen to me. I'm going to have a cardiac arrest, right? I'm going to have diabetes. I'm going to have all kinds of nasty problems. So why, if I know that that's going to happen, why do I continue to smoke? I had an uncle, Uncle Johnny, right? 80, 80 years old or 70 years old had, I think it was tuberculosis or I don't know. It was something horrible. Was walking around with one of those things with the bag on it, right? And the oxygen, oxygen tank, right? And, and this, I, I am not kidding you. He would wheel out to the front of the hospital, take the thing off, hit his cigarette, put the oxygen back on his head. Are you kidding me? You know that your life is going to end because of what you're doing. But you're accepting that future because it, it requires nothing different from you right now. And I'm saying, step your life up. Step it up. Realize that if you want something more out of life, you've got to give it up right now. You've got to create it right now. And here's the really just jacked up part. You may give it up right now and you may do what you need to do and it still may not work. And you're going to have to go back and do it again and go back and do it again and go back and do it again. If you really want to be successful, you're going to have to fail to get there. You're going to have to make a lot of decisions that don't work out to get the ones that do so that you get the experience, you get the connections, you get the contacts, you get the relationships, and then you can piece them all together to create an, a, an opportunity that never existed, right? And then here's the third thing. Some words for success have been respelled. Easy. The new spelling of that is right there. W-O-R-K-H-R-D. You got to work hard. There is no easy. There's no easy. There is no easy. Even if you do our turnkey system, right? And let's say you go, hey, look, Pete, I've got 70 grand. Here you go. There's a $70,000. You go ahead and do it. I'm going to take the, the money at the end. Great. But you still had to do something to earn the money. You still had to do something to earn the 70 grand. You still had to do something to, to keep doing it during the day, right? What are you going to be doing all day? I mean, it isn't just about giving up and letting somebody else do everything for you. I promise you, you won't get where you need to go. You've got to create something for you. And you've got to work hard for it. You've got to be up late. Look, I was up till two or three in the morning the last couple nights creating some different um, videos that I've, I've put together, right? Especially like if you go to uh, the free, ourfreewebinar.com that I showed you earlier for the, the webinar, I did a 10 minute video that I edited from uh, last week or two weeks ago from our, our workshop, right? And I mean, I was editing that thing for literally 48 hours. I was down editing it and, and cutting it back and forth and, and putting the music and everything together because I wanted it to be right. Because I want more out of my life. And I understand that if I put things in it together in a certain way that makes people enjoy watching it, they're going to learn more from watching it. And I've spent two, three years learning how to edit. I've spent two or three years learning how to do all kinds of different things, staying up late because my life isn't balanced. It isn't. I work way more than anything else. But I include my kids. I include my family. So it's all of us working together. I created an environment that allowed me to, to do what I needed to do and still to get the results I wanted. And I did that by asking questions. I did that by saying, look, how could I do this and do this, right? So how could I make money and include my family? How could I do this and do this? You guys can do the same thing. Nothing is preventing you from adding filters to your questions to yourself, but you don't do that. You say, man, this is never going to work. Why would they believe in me? And phew, that's it. And then what does your brain do? Immediately he goes, well, I'm not going to make you stupid. I'll tell you why they wouldn't believe in you because of this reason and this reason and this reason and this reason. And so now you're convincing yourself why you're so stupid and why you shouldn't get the job. And boom, why would you ever go and apply now? Are you kidding me? You're firing yourself before you even started, right? You create your destiny. You create your environment. And I'm telling you right now, the, the biggest challenge you're ever going to have is staring down the, the, the barrel of two weeks till you have zero money, not knowing how it's going to come in and have to put your head around figuring out an opportunity, figuring out a path. Because you don't have a job, because you don't have 
parents or you don't have this or you don't have that or you don't have anybody that you can rely on. That's what an entrepreneur's life is like. But when we make it, nobody can hold us back. You can't stop us. You can't stop us from creating the reality. And you can never take it away. And so for me, it's all about what can I do to build that life for myself? What can I do to make that a reality? And every day I do steps to make it happen. Every day I work towards that goal. I write my goals every single night. That's part of the the 21 day challenge, although I've been doing it for a, a year and a half now. But even my girls do it. They write their goals every night before they go to bed and they write between three and four, right? Three to five, three to five uh, goals. But look, does it matter how many they write? No, I just want them to get in the habit right now of writing their goals and writing where they wanna go, creating that destination and that path. Because if we don't know where we wanna go, it's impossible to get there. It's impossible, right? We already talked about in this whole chapter leading up to tonight was what is communication? We talked about verbal and nonverbal. We talked about finding ground zero. Where are you right now, right? Because it's impossible to launch and go where you wanna go if you don't know where you are. That makes sense, right? There's no way if, for instance, okay, all of you right now, I'm gonna ask you a simple question. I'm gonna ask you, um, somebody drops me in your state. I wanna know how do I get to the airport, the airport that you go to whenever you fly out. How do I get to that airport? The next question you're going to ask me is what? Where are you? If you don't know where I am in your state, how could you ever possibly tell me how to get to the airport? You can know where the airport is all you want. But if you don't if you don't know where I am, you can't get me there at all. Cuz you don't know whether to tell me to go north, south, east, west, nothing, right? The same thing You have to know where you're going. Because if I tell you, hey guys, I'm at the airport. How do I get to that place we wanted to go to? And you say, well, where is it? And I go, I I don't know. Well, what's it called? I don't know. Okay. What were we going to do there? I don't know. All right. I'm going to need something, right? I'm going to need something to, 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 for me to put something together. Like I need to know what you want to do so I can get you to that location, that destination. If you don't know where you want to go, nobody can help you get there. Nobody. And I'm going to tell you right now, the most important person that needs to know to help you is you. Because the biggest cheerleader you're ever going to have is you. You're going to have to be the one that gets you up in the morning and gets you excited and drives you to make it happen. You're never, ever going to have an outside cheerleader that will be stronger than you can be. So the question is, are you ready to step up and be you? Are you ready to step up and drive home what you want? Are you ready to to start creating motivation and willpower from pain? Because I'm going to tell you right now, whatever hurts the most is what you fix, right? The, The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Absolutely. So what does it, what hurts you more? Find that pain and then accentuate it so it moves you, right? And, th- and this is what I mean. Let's say you wanted to, to, to stop working and I am not telling anybody to do what I'm about to say, okay? I am not, uh, I, uh, I repeat, I am not telling you to do what I am about to say. But let's pretend for a second in La La Land, right? You wanted to quit your job. You hated your job. You hated it. You wanted to quit so bad, but you keep not quitting. You keep not doing anything. If you walked in and punched your boss right in the mouth, you are creating an action that probably is going to get you fired. And then guess what? Poof, no more job, right? Sometimes, and, and that's pain, right? He got the pain. You got fired. Hey, there's the pain. It all created, but it got you to, to some degree where you wanted to go. Now, I'm not saying do that, but I am saying there are certain things that I have done. For instance, I wanted to quit chewing, Right. And I kept wanting it, but I needed to make the pain to quit less than the pain not to quit, right? So how did I tip? How did I tip it, right? Because, man, that pain to quit sucks because you get the withdrawals, you get all that stuff, right? And that, I didn't didn't like going through that. I didn't want to go through that until I started focusing on what would it be like if I knew I was going to die and I didn't get to see my daughter graduate. I knew... I knew that I had a year left and they were 10 years old and I only had a year left to live. And I knew that I would miss all that. Man, it could bring me to tears right now just thinking about it. 
It freaks me out. And that was more painful than me quitting chewing. That was, that, that pain was able to leverage me, right? Look, there's pain that we have from doing anything. All you got to do is, if you want to get over that pain, create the pain on the other side of that thing even more. It'll drive you to it. It'll drive you through it, right? And at the end of the day, isn't that where you want to be? We want to be driven through it. We want to get past that pain because we know on the other side of the obstacle, we know on the other side is happiness. We know that. We see everybody running around. They're not chewing. They're not smoking cigarettes and they seem to be having a great time. I want to be like them. But if I want to be like them, I've got to get through this challenging part. Now, here's the cool part. The sooner I start, the sooner it's done. And once I realized that, I was able to start making changes. Once I realized that, look, the pain was going to be there no matter what. It was going to be there. Whether I chose to accept that or not, it was going to be there. And at some point, some doctor was going to tell me, you need to quit right now or you're going to die. I just knew that, right? And even if it wasn't true, that's what I was telling myself in the head over and over and over and over and over. So it became a truth, period. I told myself that so many times that it was true now. And so I knew that I was going to die if I did not quit chewing. That still wasn't painful enough for me. Until I, until I really clicked it down and I said, look, the longer I chew, the harder it's going to be to quit. I know at some point I'm going to have to quit. And the sooner I quit, the sooner I can love my life. The sooner I can be free of this, of this chain, right? And so I just kept doing it. And I'm telling you, it probably took me a month and a half of like literally every day talking to myself about it. I was listening to Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Eric Thomas, all those guys. I mean, every day, three, four hours a day. I was at the gym three, four hours a day, literally. That's what I was doing. And it was all about how to get myself to change. And it was hard. But once it clicked, it clicked. It was weird. When I decided to quit chewing and I was done, I was done. Like in two days, it was over. There was and, and there really wasn't any pain at all to go through it because I'd, I'd gone through it already in my head so many times. I'd gone through all the pain. I'd already weaned myself off because in my head I was already doing it, right? I was already knowing I was going to quit. And so when I actually went, Psh, that's it. Then that was it. It was like I just put this, uh, I, put my, I put my can of chew on a, a rocket launcher and I went, <laughs> and I shot it. I don't, I don't know if I, if I broke all those things or not, but uh, I know that I did launch it like that. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun. But it's all about life, right? Then we got to become limitless. So what happens? How do you become limitless? How do you let go? How do you break those glass ceilings, right? And that's going to come to the way that we talk to ourselves. It's going to come to having a mindset of opportunity. Not looking for problems, but looking for solutions. We focus on, we get what we focus on. We get what we focus on. We get what we focus on. Another one of those simple things. You get what you focus on. Okay, great. Man, but you know what, Pete? I'll tell you this. Man, my life sucks and this and this and this. Look, you get what you focus on. Stop saying that. Start start focusing on this. Yeah, I, I would, but you don't understand. Like, I'm going to go home and I'm going to... Okay, you're not listening. I'm telling you right now. It's the same. No matter what. You get what you focus on. If you sit there and say, my spouse sucks, they're not attractive, I hate them, they treat me like crap, da 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 that's all you're ever going to see because your brain will not let you be a liar. If instead you say, man, I'm working this out, we're getting better, we're getting better, you're going to start seeing those pieces being put together too. You can create your life to be better or worse, totally up to you. What are you going to build your future life? Because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of you feel like you're, you're put into a, a jail cell. You're feel, you feel like you're a victim. But the only person you're a victim to is you. You're a victim to the world that you've created. You're a victim to the world that you've accepted. You've accepted. You've chose to make this decision instead of that one because this one felt better at the time. You've chose to make this decision instead of this one because this one felt better at the time. In fact, that's pretty much how you've made all of your decisions. What's going to make me feel good right now? Because if you were making decisions based on what was going to make you feel good later, you'd be making different decisions. You wouldn't be deciding to, to stay up late and go hang out with your friends and go drinking and partying. You wouldn't be 
going and watching TV and this, you'd be on more webinars. You'd be listening to more positive in, in influences. You'd be looking at more self-help. You'd be doing more research. You'd be building your life the way you really want it to be. See, if I told you you could do anything you want, if I told you that anything was possible, what would you do differently tomorrow? If I said, there's no way that you could fail, what would you do differently tomorrow than you did last week? In fact, here's what I'd love to know. If you knew last week you couldn't have failed, let's play it, let's play rewind. If you knew last week you couldn't have failed, what three things would you have done differently? I would love for you guys to, to hit me up, to put them in the uh, questions box. Um, I'm not doing a poll or anything because I don't want to sit there and drive it over the, the top. But if you look in there, um, if you go on the questions, just type in three things that you would have done differently. And at the end, I'll, I'll read them off. Um, we've got a ton of people on here, so we should have them if you guys aren't too embarrassed to share that. All right. And if you are, that's cool. Don't put anything in that. I won't worry about it. But I would love to hear how. And, and here's why I say that. Because when you share something and say, I would have done this, I would have done this differently, somebody else listening is going to go, man, I would have done that differently too. And what I want to show you guys all is that we're the same. All of us. We're all the same. We're all people. We're all humans. We all have 24 hours in a day. The difference is the decisions we make during that 24 hours. Are you making decisions based on the person you want to become? Or are you making them based on the person that you have become? Right? Is it who you want to be? Or is it who you become? Because if it's who you want to be, I promise you it's going to be uncomfortable. I promise you some of those decisions that you're going to have to make, some of those choices, they're going to really make you sweat. And you're going to really feel out of place. And if you are, and you do, let me share this with you. You're on the right path. Because if everything you constantly do feels comfortable, you're never, ever, ever going to get where you want to go. Because it means you're making decisions so that you feel good not so that you're happy, all right? Now, communicating your way to success. Well, let's talk about that. If we go back to how I was dressed a few years ago doing this, right? I wasn't wearing collared shirts or anything. I was wearing my hat. It was much different. I'm different now because I'm looking and helping a different thing. I'm not just who cares. I care what my presence is. I care what we're sharing. I care all. I care about all of this, right? And the, the, the reality is, is what do you care about? What are you saying? What When you're out there, when you're out in public, when you're out in, in with your friends, with your family, with anybody, what are you talking about? How are you talking? Are you communicating in a way that makes people want to do business with you? Or are you communicating in a way that makes people want to run away from you? Right? Are you complaining all the time and like, Shh, man, you know, this and that and this and that and it's so unfair and this and that and this and that? Where people just cannot stand to be around you. Or are all you doing is lifting everybody up so that they can't get enough? I promise, if you start feeding everybody and they can't get enough, they're going to keep coming and coming and coming. And they're going to bring friends. And the opportunities are going to start to fly. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So get out there. And get more people to know, like you, and trust you. Create more opportunities. I don't care if you want to do stuff in real estate or if you want to do stuff in marketing, or if you want to do stuff in construction, or, or whatever, whatever your company may be. This is about entrepreneurship. And it's the same. I don't care what you're doing. Entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship. It's all hard work. It's all a lot of lonely nights. And you know, one of the weirdest things I think I feel a lot is I really do feel lonely. I Even though I have a wife, right? I still feel like there's nobody I can really talk to. There's nobody that I can that I can really explain how I feel and would understand. And I think that's part of the thing that's really difficult too. See, when you're in a job, when you work with employees, right? Or you work with other employees and, and your your coworkers, you can complain about the same things, right? God, the man and this and that and this, and everybody gets to gets on the same field. Like we all understand. But when you're an entrepreneur and you're running it, nobody does. You're literally by yourself and it's lonely and I get it. But what other option is there? If you don't do this and create your own life, 
then all you're going to do is create somebody else's for them. And so that's why I do this show, because I want you to realize that you're not alone. I'm sharing some of these deep, dark things that, that I feel like, man, this sucks, but I'm sharing it with you not to complain, but to show you that, hey, look, we all feel like this. We all get wake up at three o'clock in the morning going, oh my gosh, how is this going to happen? How am I going to work this out? Entrepreneurs typically have insomnia. I get it. And then how to create urgency right now. We talked about that last week. And this week is all about living that solution driven, living a solution driven life. Or I'm sorry, that was last week. This week, click is all about, there we go. Focus on your outcome, right? A lot of times we will, let's just look at when you're in a relationship and you start to have an argument, right? And you start to argue with them. And now all of a sudden it becomes about your point. It becomes about being right. Just my point. You got to understand what my point is. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like the, the car's gone. This is gone. Yeah, but you need to understand, right? All of a sudden we, ugh, you got to understand. But we're not looking at the, the, the outcome, right? The outcome is we want to have a nice night. So then why are we blowing up right now? Why are we letting it attack us? Why are we freaking out? Because we're not focusing on the outcome. We're focusing on the situation. We're focusing on the moment right? Instead of focusing on where we want it to go. And so tonight we're talking a lot about how to focus on that. It all comes down to this. It all comes down to what do you really want? It all comes down to where are you going? Where are you going? What kind of outcome do you want? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be mad? Do you want to be in a fight? Do you want to be making out? What do you want, right? And obviously that those would be with your significant other, not just any random person. But... <laughs> At the same time, what do you want? Do you want to have a great life? Yes. Okay. Do you want to have everything that you've wanted? Yes. Okay. Now those are words. So let's start putting some action behind it. What are you doing to create that? See, the reason I say write your goals every night is because if you write goals, if you write what you want to do, where you want to be, the next day... You're thinking about those goals that you wrote the night before. And when you, what you focus on, you get, right? We just talked about that. What you focus on, you get. So you could, <coughs> you could focus on what you're not getting, or you could focus on what you want to get. You could focus on the life you want to create. You could start focusing on that so much that you start doing little actions every day to start putting that reality together. For instance, let's go back to when I wanted to start a radio show. It's like, you know, I wanted it, I wanted it, I wanted it. I kept wanting it for so long. Finally, I got so mad that nobody would help me because I kept putting out things on Facebook and nobody would help. And I was like, Psh, whatever then, man. I'm going to do this myself. And I just started calling radio stations until I figured out how to do it. See, it's about taking action in spite of knowledge. Sometimes that's what needs to happen because that's the only way you're going to get through the, to the experience, right? In the end, what do you want? In the end, what do you want? What do you want? Do you want to have a nice house? Do you want to have a great spouse? Do you want, right? And let's take that. Do you want to have a great spouse? Yes, I want to have a great spouse. Then why are you treating the one that you have like crap? Right? And I'm not saying that you particularly are doing that. And I'm not saying that I'm particularly doing that, but I'm saying that sometimes I do. I'm saying that, yes, I want to have the greatest spouse in the world, but sometimes I don't act like that at all. And I need to change that because my wife is awesome. She's incredible. And sometimes I don't treat her well. Sometimes I'm mean to her, right? Sometimes I take out my everything that's going on in my life and I'm like, you don't get it, man. And I just light her up. And that's not right. And it's not fair. So if I want to have this great relationship, I need to stop acting like that. I need to stop doing that. And here I am. I'm not a kid. I'm older and I'm still looking and learning and changing the things that I do to create a better life for myself. It's a constant. It's just like golf, right? I, golf, I swear to God, that is the one thing that it's like there's 50 million things you got to be focused on to golf. Like at least with hitting or, or I don't know, I guess maybe that's not true either, but 
in baseball, it seems a whole lot easier. You just hit the ball that's coming at you. But with golf, it's like you're up, down. you got to have this arm bent and this one straight. And you got to rotate the whole body and don't take your eyes off the ball. But the ball's going that way, but you got to keep your eyes down. It's just crazy. It's crazy. I don't even get it. There's too many things for me to, to, to focus on. But that's what life is like. Well, you got to go and get this. You got to pick up the kids from school. You got to go ahead and you got to tell your wife you love her. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do It's like, psh, 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 right? But in the end, what do you want? Do you want to have a great life? Do you want to have a great wife? Do you want to have great kids? You know, you, people say, well, yeah, I want to have great kids. But then they don't spend any time with them. They don't focus on them. And again, I think that I could do more. And I think I do a lot more than a lot of people. But I still think that I could do more. But again, life isn't balanced. And sometimes we have to give up certain things for other things. And successful people know that. And unsuccessful people talk about balance all day long while they're sitting in the welfare line and while they're, they're having no money, right? They talk about how it's just about balance. It isn't just about balance. It's about creating what you want. And that is never going to be balanced because look, if you, if you look when, when something's growing, right? In the very beginning and you're growing a plant, you're watering it all the time. And then as time goes on, you don't have to water it as much. And nothing is balanced. Everything has ups and downs, ups and downs. So stop trying to be balanced and start trying to be focused. Focusing on what you need to be doing. Focusing on the right things, right? It's impossible to focus on something unless you know what it is. And then again, we go right back to the uh, right back to the, the 21 day goal challenge. Again, I think that you know when you talk about the challenge, the 21 day challenge, it's all about writing your goals. And you guys can all go to go go make something. Well, go make something happen.com doesn't have the the challenge on it, but the gentrygroup.com has a challenge. Um, right there on the right side. And if you go to uh, the 21 day goal challenge.com, it's there. Or Pete's 21 day challenge, it's there too. Um, but there's all kinds of ways to get to it. And if you still can't find it, let me know and I'll, I'll get you to it. Um, but when you focus on where you want to go, you have a much greater chance of actually getting there. All right. Now, you do not need January 1st. You don't need the first of the month. You don't need the first of the week. You don't need Mondays. You don't need any of that. You need today. That's the fourth tip for today. Stop procrastinating. Stop putting everything off. The more you put it off, the more difficult it is to take action on it. And again, look, quitting may be ways to solve things, but when you finish things, you're going to be a lot happier. You're going to be a lot happier when you get things done. So start finishing things so you can be happy. And again, that goes to doing things now that aren't necessarily happy so that you can finish them and you can become happy, right? So um, for all of you guys that are brand new and you're looking to get into something, you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a real estate investor, you want to be something like that, I've partnered up with a company called Strongbrook. Um, we have a great thing that we're creating there. It's going to be a team. I've got like four or five people now on this. We're growing it. There's a lot of leads that are coming in through the LinkedIn groups and everything else that I have. And I wanted to be able to, to offer something that new investors that could come in and it's kind of like a business in a box. If you'd like to know more information about that, all you got to do is go to unlockyourreality.com and put in there to, uh, have a, uh, to schedule a time and we'll give you a call and we'll, we'll explain the whole thing to you. That, this just isn't the, the platform to explain that part of it, all right? Dedicated credit repair. I went off for like 20 minutes last week on them. Um, and, and I don't even care about the dedicated credit repair part or the C2C credit. It's all about it's all about leverage, right? And we just talked about this before, but look, if you're looking to get into real estate, and let's say you have an IRA and it's got 15 grand or 20 grand into it, but you want to do a deal with us. And to do a deal with us, the minimum is 50 grand. And so you're like, man, I'm going to have to go get a partner. If you go and you go to, to c2ccredit.com or creditcards.com, go to creditcards.com, you can look for 0% cards that are up to 15 months. If you get access to those, you could get $30,000 in credit at 0%. And now you don't need a partner to come in on one of those deals. You can do it all yourself. And so that's why if you're not in a position to do that, if you're not in a position to get 20, 30 grand in credit cards, 
that's when you need to call c2ccredit.com. Or, I mean, go to c2ccredit.com. It's only 200 bucks, 79 bucks a month. I'm doing it right now, currently in the process of doing it. In the last uh, two months, they've already ripped, I think it's like 25 things off of my credit. Um, two of my bureaus are already up to 50% with all negative um, negative stuff removed. So it's awesome, man. My, my, my score is jumping big time. Um, and then for some of you guys, you're thinking, well, I'm already a 650 or whatever. Shannon was a 720, 720 and a 650. And we got her on this too, so that we can jump her score. Because again, we want to get to those 0% cards. I want to, I want to get, to, <laughs> I want to have more of the 40 and 50 grand at 0%. And I don't have that now. My credit wasn't in that kind of situation. It wasn't in that position, right? I just kept putting my head in the sand and going, well, if I got cash, that's all that matters. But it doesn't, it doesn't at all. Because if I've got $4 million out right now at 12%, and if I had an 800 score and I could get that same $4 million at 6%, I just saved half of that fee, half of that fee. And that applies to all parts of your life. If you want a better life, get your life less expensive. Your life does not have to be as expensive as it is. Look, there's all kinds of deals happening. If you have great credit, you get in on those deals. If you don't, you don't. So if you want in on better deals, get better credit. It's as simple as that, all right? Um, here are the three books that I've got coming out here. We've got Force Your Dreams Into Reality already out. You guys can go to forceyourdreams.com and check that out. The question factor is going to be coming. It's not out yet. So if you go there, nothing's going to happen. And same thing with Unbreakable Habits. Um, but those are the next two books that I have coming out. So I'm excited about those. Here is another book that I wrote, Off-Market Property Blueprint. So if you guys are looking at getting in and you're like wondering, ah, I wonder what real estate is kind of about, this would be a great book for you guys to download and, and get. And it's absolutely free. Again, it's another ebook. Super simple. It's only about 35, 40 pages. So it's short, but it's to the point. Gives you a couple of different opportunities or options on how to find off-market properties. All right. Here's the webinar again that I talked about earlier. So you guys can come and check that out. I promise you it's going to be awesome. Rfreewebinar.com. And when you go to rfreewebinar.com, the very first page is going to be that 10-minute video. You can check out and see what we did um, last week at the uh, at the event. It was, it was absolutely awesome. And what they felt about it, because that was pretty cool too. Um, and then here is my new logo for Asmus Media Group. I'm putting the Go Make Something Happen ghosted right behind it, which I think it just looks awesome. And as always, you put the Y in our success. I can't even believe this. I'm right on the money with the, the hour mark. So real quick, if there's anybody that has any questions... Um, let me know. Let me go over here. Contact Mavis. What do you mean? Contact more sellers on your own. Correct. Work your business more and not leave it to others. Um, but I don't understand what you meant by contact more sellers. Oh, I know what you mean. You mean you've got to get out there and start contacting more sellers, not looking for other people to just do that. And absolutely right. Look, you can sit on your couch and wait for everybody else to do things. Or you can go, you know what? What do I need done right now that I need help with? this. Well, I'm going to go learn it. I needed to help with, um, I mean, this is stupid, but on the Gentry group, um, it had, they had ported over from C to C Ria. So it had C to C Ria's favicon, which is that little tiny icon at the top on, in the HTML browser bar, right? And it was bugging me because it was like, man, this is not coast to coast. Why does it keep doing that? And I'd asked my, my guy three times to fix it, right? Three times. Nothing. Finally, I went, you know what? Forget this, man. Google, how do I change my favicon? Boom, five minutes I was done. Had it changed on every, I was able to go and change them on all of my websites. It was awesome. And instead of me asking somebody else to do it, I now did it myself. Now, does that mean that I'm gonna do everything myself? Hell no, that is not what I am saying. I am not saying go and do everything yourself. I am saying though, in the beginning, you are gonna have to be a one man band or one woman band. You're gonna be doing everything on your own. You're going to be creating everything. And you can't complain. You can, but nobody's going to listen. And nobody's going to care. So buck up. Realize that life is what it is. And get excited about it. Get excited at the opportunity to create a better one for yourself. Because you're on this webinar. You're plugged in. And Mavis, I think you're awesome too, by the way. So I'm, I'm glad that you're on this. You guys, the more you plug in, the more you motivate yourself, the more you, you get your brain twisted around the right way of thinking, the more results that you're going to have that are in the way that you want them. 
Now, one last thing that I have to ask. So all of you guys, I would really appreciate it because, again, we've got a ton of people on here. All of you guys, if you could say what you liked best out of tonight's webinar on social media somewhere and just tag me in it, right? Um, my, it's really easy. All you got to do is at Pete Asmus. That, that pretty much tags me on any, any, any kind of social platform out there, Twitter, Instagram, and all that. But what, you know, journey to success, get the winning edge, and then what you liked about tonight. What affected you the most? What, what did you get out of what we talked about? And how are you going to do something different? Like what action are you going to take? So what affected you and what action are you going to take to move forward? Guys, I appreciate all of your stuff. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, hold on. Maybe it's, yes, that's it. I was having my, yeah, exactly. Um, but thank you guys so much for being on tonight again and um, for joining us. Every Sunday night, next Sunday is going to be the last one for this month because after that, I have another workshop that I'm doing in three weeks. So if you guys are interested in that, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be awesome. Check out that 10-minute video. Come and check me out. And if you have questions on how to get into it, by the way, I have a special going. So if it is something that you are interested in, I am not going to say what the price is, but I have a special going until tomorrow night um, for that price. So if that's something that you're interested in, let me interested in, let me actually till Thursday night, till I do the, the webinar, let me know. Um, besides that, I think I'm pretty much good. Guys, thank you so much. Make sure that you always go make something happen. Set your week up, write your goals and get out there and create your reality. You guys are amazing. Don't let anybody take you down. And don't let anybody tell you that that's not true. Have a great week, guys, and go make something happen. Bye. This is how we roll. Oh, 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 oh.